Uh, for those of you who are wondering what the underlying topics are, you know, it's basically uh, the other dividing issue in the country, which is what is in the way of people and who is the true enemy. Because for some reason we're looking for the true enemy. And, uh, I, I'm not sure why, but uh, you know, some people have decided the enemy is the one percent. You know, those evil rich SOBs. Other people have decided the enemy is the government. We need to be anarchists. We need to get rid of everything. It's all in our way. If we just got rid of all of this shit, we'd be good, free people. Um, some people have decided that the president is what's wrong with the country. You know, interesting statistic. Barack Obama receives 400% more death threats than Bush. Um, we use the, when people, just quickly, when people use 400% rather than four times as many. Yes, uh, yeah, I, I agree. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, uh, you know what? And, and that's based on a little bit of higgledy math. Let, 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 let's say Obama receives more death threats than Bush, and uh, it's, you know what? You can interpret that statistic however you want. I think it has a lot more to do with the fact that people are angry. We are not doing as good as a country right now than we were under Bush's first term. It's, just a, it's a matter of statistical fact. It is a saying nothing for Bush or nothing against Obama. That's, uh, I mean, we, we, we can say plenty of things on both sides of those issues. But it's a fact. People are angry. And one of the things people are choosing to be angry at, it's all Barack Obama's fault. He did it. <laughs> so, of course, some of those are resulting in death threats. <laughs> Uh, and you know, then there's the other thing. Oh well, it's the it's it's the racial issues. You know, people are just hating people because of their race. And you know, an interesting little thing that's recently come out in that is saying that diversity programs are having the exact opposite effect, and that they're all bullshit. <laughs> uh, so, I. I a, on these three issues and any other ones you can think of, what do you think the real problem is with the country right now? Who do you think the real people behind the veil that are making all our lives bad are? Um, I think a lot of it, I think that, I think, I personally think that uh, the monetary system that we use, you know, money out of debt with the Federal Reserve is a bad thing. Uh, okay, to, 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 I have to ask on that since you're going there. Do you think that that is the rich? Or do you think it's the government? Or do you think it's neither? Well, it's certainly not all the rich. Uh, just because you're in the 1% doesn't mean that you're supporting that or not supporting the country, uh, it's likely a few people who just are part of that group who want to profit off that. Uh, and possibly, you know, I don't know if it's the government, it's parts of the government. As we know, there's politicians who don't like that. There's politicians who think it's necessary. So, yeah, the government's not one entity. Yeah. As much as people like to think of it as this one simplified, it's like I mean, it, 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 it might be. It might be in other countries and in the past and places, but at least here, I don't. I don't fully believe with conspiracy theories that say that oh, it's just controlled by one little power that everyone in the government's puppets. I think that our actual system of government is good, and we do have some separation of power. Uh, Rather, we can keep that separation or not is a different matter, but yeah. It's, it's not as bad as having one king or one group that can choose everything. We are better than that. Yeah, I, you know, no disrespect to any country that is a monarchy, but I am so happy the United States did not, because there were a lot of people in the United States back in the day that would have been more than happy to have King George Washington. They would have been very happy with it. <laughs> And it's like, we have a good king. Not like that bad king. <laughs> anyway, um, and the death threats are interesting. I'm wondering how much of those are from the internet. 
Uh, that is one of the s interesting things. Yes, uh, internet death threats are being taken more seriously than they ever have. You know, yeah. uh, fourteen-year-old kids are having the Secret Service show up on their doorstep right. <laughs> just I for blogging. That, that might be part of what's causing it. More people are using the internet. More kids are using Facebook and stuff. And oh, they make some inappropriate joke. And it might not be that more people aren't necessarily really saying to kill the Oh, oh no, I, I think 99% of these, just like 99% of all death threats, are people who, in a fit of bad judgment, blow off some inappropriate steam. Yeah. And, and right. yeah. So what I'm saying is that instead of, so here's what I'm saying, is that instead of them, there actually being more death threats, it's just that with the internet, the U.S. Secret Service is picking up on more. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, uh, but we did or have the like internet of, because this, this is comparing the first. This statistic is comparing the first term of uh, uh, the last Bush to the first term of Obama. You know, it's like it's, for some reason that's what we do today. We don't compare to other presidents or other similar situations. We compare the first term of, of George Bush to the first term of Barack Obama. That's what we compare things to. Like, why I have no idea. I would personally, I think a better comparison of what was going on would be to take into account all the factors that have adjusted and compare today to the early '80s and the Great Depression. Because those are the two times in history in the United States in which we have a reasonable degree of statistics that were reasonable. The country was in a similar shape. You know, it wasn't. It wasn't doing so good. That's, I think that is how you should be. You should be comparing it like to like as you can. But that's me. Uh, but yeah. But we had the internet back then. So do you think it's, I mean, it can't just be the internet. Do you think it, we're paying more? It, 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 we did not necessarily have as many people on Facebook. And okay. And social networking and Twitter. And those are more uh, facilitatable to rants and blowing off steam, including inappropriate steam, than things that existed back then. And they're, because they're a centralized source, it makes tracking and curating them with automated algorithms much easier. Correct. So before, people might have blown off Steam on some chat room or IRC, but now they blow it off on an account that is associated with their identity, with their picture, with their phone address, with their phone number and address. And because of federal law, these centralized hubs are required to log the IP addresses, which means this is all. Uh, I think that that's part of it, yeah. Yeah, which means all they do is subpoena who did this. According to our records, it was yada yada. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, these, these sites, a lot of them require you to give your identity. But it's not just that, it's, it's a bigger deal nowadays to not be anonymous. Well, whether you give them your legitimate identity or not, if it's somebody like the Secret Service coming after you, they don't go by the identifying information they give. What they do is they send a, a they, it's not necessarily a warrant, depending whether they're acting under the Patriot Act or not. But basically, if like if it's a Facebook comment, they call Facebook and they say, Facebook, comment blah blah made it blah blah was made by what IP address? And that's what they go after. So they know from where using what internet connection. If they need additional information, then they expand into the rest of it. But that's where they start. And most people are doing this from either their school or their home internet thing. So if they go to a school, they then go, school, what account was accessing this IP address at this time? And it's federal law. The school has to keep those records. That's why you have all those little logins. They have to know who was doing what, where, when. So, it's, it, that, I mean, the reality is, even if you're not giving the information, you're anonymous to the entity you're dealing with, not from Uncle Sam. <laughs> That's, I, I, I'm just being honest here. You know, unless you're, unless you're cloaking your IP address and doing things like, it's, you're not as anonymous as you think you are. <laughs>
Anyways, I, I interrupted your your point. I'm sorry. No, that's okay. Uh, what else do we have to talk about? Uh, um, well, while we're on this topic, just to spend a brief shot, how would you go about putting the country back on track? You know, because we're angry right now as a country. We're looking for somebody to blame. But I think in spite of our anger, in spite of desperately wanting to throw someone against the wall in the hopes that sacrificing them will make it all better, I think at our core, we all know at the end of the day, we've got to look in the mirror and we've got to do it ourselves. So, you know, no matter how angry we are, I think when we, when we calm down, we all do know that. At the end of the day, it is really up to us as individuals to do our bit. So, what do you think is the right, you know, bit? What, what, what things, what, what do we need to do to get us back on track? Because that is the billion dollar question. Yeah. Well, we need enough jobs to allow people, allow businesses, to allow people to have money, so allowing businesses to new, allowing new people to start businesses and feel comfortable that their business has a chance to succeed is important. Okay, uh, what's standing in the way of that happening? Well, not people not having the jobs and, and people being afraid to spend money. Okay, how do you alleviate that fear? By having people have a chunk of money. <laughs> okay, so we have a chicken and we need an egg to get a chicken. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so if I just had an egg, I'd have a chicken that could give me eggs. But if I had a chicken, I wouldn't need the egg to give me a chicken. Hmm. <laughs> you know, I mean, that, that's the thing. We, we all have good intentions. I think that's what we all want. We all want more jobs. We, we all want the economy to do being better. We want people to be to feel safe spending their last dollar, knowing they'll get another dollar tomorrow. You know, if they have to spend their last dollar. Ideally, you have savings and you're not spending your last dollar. But we want people to feel confident like enough in tomorrow that they can do it if they have to. I would like America to not run on debt. I, I do wish that we did have some kind of account with a positive amount in there. Now, I know that the government is not there to make money. It's supposed to not make a lot of money. It's supposed to spend everything possible on the people. However... Wait, 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 wait. wait. I, I have to disagree with that statement. I don't think the government there is to spend all our money. <laughs> I, I think the government there is to provide for our security. Uh, what else would it do with the money? Say so what? What else would it do with the money? Mm, how about be as large as it needs to to... To, to protect our uh, liberty and allow us... That, that, that's part of it, too. Uh, oh, okay, but the way you... The, oh, okay, but the way you said it, and there's a lot of people in the U.S. who feels this way. It's like, well, the government, you know, the government should just spend all the money it needs to and spend all the time. Well, eventually, one of two things happens. We either go into a lot of debt, or we all have to pay higher taxes. So, I, I, I am not a fan of the government should just spend as much money as it wants. I think it should have to justify every single penny it spends to... That, that's, yeah, that, that's not my point. <laughs> I, I agree with that. My, my point is that it, the government shouldn't save money. I... No, no, no. The go we should not be paying the government to hold our money... For in its right. account, no. It needs, if there's, if, if we ever so got, po if spending. we ever got positive, or we had no national debt and we had a surplus, I would expect every taxpayer in America to get a check that year instead of a bill. That's what I'm saying. Yes. So that the government, it's not the government. I think that it's important for the government to try to be in the positive every year, but it should always spend that money on something. Yeah, yeah. and Whatever if it. it is, and no, if it can't find anything, if it can't find anything that people need, it should give that money back to the people. And I think that would be good for the economy. If someone gets, say, I don't know, thirty dollars from the government, they're going to spend it on a drugstore, and that's going to add up, and that will stimulate things. So that, that's not. Well, a bad thing. okay, you want to be careful about that because that was the idea behind the Bush three hundred dollars, six hundred dollars checks. The difference from a stimulus and just having extra money. You know, one, you're getting put more in debt, 
Uh, another one is, you know, I think that there's a difference in that. Okay. So you think it should only be stimulus if we have positive coffers? Um, well, you know, do they, should it should the government be giving back those money to these people, or should it, it if it has that extra money, spend it on roads and stuff like that? If we need roads and stuff like that, I think it should spend them on those things. We always need roads. Okay. So if there okay, if there's something we need that is in the authority of the government, that is the responsibility of the government, then yes, it should spend the money on that. Now the the debate comes. Who should be doing this? Should the government or should the people? You know, that's the debate that comes up there. I, I want to ask you another question, though, on the refund thing, since we've got in there. Um, do you think the refund should be equitable or proportional? Okay. We tax on a sliding scale. The more you make, the more you pay. Now, that's a issue of much debate in the country right now because a lot of people are trying to say, well, no, the people who make more pay less. Okay, setting that issue aside for the moment because that's going to require us to go off on an hour talk about how our tax code works. Do you think, if, like, say there's a surplus where if you divided it between all the taxpayers, it would be $30. Do you think everybody should get $30? Or do you think it should be proportional based on the percentage of the base you paid? Proportional, otherwise it's stealing. Okay. Well, by, by nature, our, our, the way our government functions is by stealing. We take from the haves and give to the have-nots. We do have very much a Robin Hood government. We, we, we draw a line in the sand and say these people can afford to pay and these people can't. But we're going to give it to everybody. I I think that because we don't say people who can't afford to pay taxes can't drive on the roads, you know. What? I, I said we don't say people who can't afford to pay taxes can't drive on the roads. Yes, but I I, I think that if we're going to be giving out money, it should be proportional. But I don't necessarily think that giving out the money is a good thing. Uh, so I, I, I think that it should be spent. We we will always have roads to fix. As far as you know, you know California. I could drive somewhere, and the roads look nice in the cities. But you go kind of to the outskirts of towns, and the roads are crappy. The government should spend money to fix those. Uh, there's parks that the government should upkeep, national parks, stuff like that. If it had the extra money, you need to spend that. That does create jobs. Well, that's the really funny thing there you're pointing out. Um, you know, everybody's like, the federal government can take such great care of everything, but what you just pointed out is that the roads that are pretty much all but the sole responsibility of the federal government are the ones that are in most disrepair. You know, because the ones in town, while they get federal money to maintain those, they are primarily maintained by your city or county government that uses them on a daily basis. You know, rather they have enough money from the federal coffers or not, the city doesn't function without those roads. So they keep them maintained as much as they can afford because they're the infrastructure of the city. I mean, that, that doesn't always happen ideally, but... <laughs> okay. Uh, anything else you think we need to address aside from our monetary issues? Uh, I don't know. We don't have too much. We've spent a lot of time. I think this is a pretty long episode. Well, I was going to cut this one into two. One on the other thing, one on this last part. So this will be like two thirty minutes and the other one will be an hour. Or thereabouts. Yeah. So you want to just tail off here and leave the rest for next time? Maybe bring this back up if Zev shows up, because then we'll have... I would like to do that, yeah. Yeah. Because we know he diametrically, he's on the other side, and that will actually let this get better discussed. So I guess we'll tail off there for this week and hope, hope to pick up on whatever develops in the politoscope next week. <laughs> All right. All right. Okay.